All right, welcome back. We continue right here with the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Air your opinions right now at 412-575-2600. So, Gene, I want to ask you your take on what we saw last night at the Peterson Event Center. Um, you know, certainly a long way to go. Whenever you have a 15-point home loss to a conference team, there's still big separation. But being there and feeling it, it felt like Jamie Dixon in the heyday when they were in the Big East because it had a definite zoo-like Big East feel to it. Uh, I thought they scraped, they clawed, they did what they could. They're undermanned. That's clear. Duke is very good. But I think it's a step in the right direction. And certainly you can feel, um, you know, that this program now under Jeff Capel is in much better hands. Oh, absolutely. I know students lined up uh, 12 hours ahead of time to get into that game. Uh, Duke is a fabulous team. With three players that are, you know, uh, obvious NBA players right now. Uh, but Pitt, uh, as we noted on this show before, Bob, looks completely fearless. I mean, you know, they're not, they're not the most talented uh, group, but, uh, boy, they, they, they really uh, give you everything they've got, and uh, they seem to know what they do and uh, what to do, and they seem to play together. So uh, they, uh, he's doing a great job. We also want to talk about, before we go to the phone banks, and that would be what happened yesterday, Major League Baseball Hall of Fame class of 2019, four members in it, including the first man, ever to have a unanimous selection. That would be Mariano Rivera, uh, Rivero of the New York Yankees, and what a closer he was, no doubt. But I'm shocked that it took this long to get a unanimous selection. When you consider who's in the Hall of Fame already, so many big names, the Clementes, the Wagners, the Cy Youngs, the Babe Ruths. So what is your theory on this, Gene? Why do people not come up with, why would you vote against any of these people uh, when it's clear a lot of these guys should be first ballot all the time, and yet somebody votes against them. Yeah, um, you know, 31 people voted against Clemente, uh, even though they waived the rules to, um, you know, the five-year waiting period uh, to get him into the Hall of Fame faster. There's still 31 people who thought he shouldn't be in. There used to be kind of a silent protocol that nobody should go in on the first ballot, or very few people should go in on the first ballot. That explains some of this stuff. Uh, now we have Edgar Martinez going in in his tenth year of eligibility. What did he? What what happened to the first nine years? Was he not the same player? I don't get, understand that. There's a lot not to understand about it. But you know the voters are uh, kind of uh, damned if they do. In another, uh, in another way, and that's uh, you know if uh, Mariano Rivera had not been. Uh, a unanimous choice, you know, we'd have been called idiots, and mm -hmm. we're getting called idiots because Mays didn't get in. So, w you know, which which way do you want it? I don't understand. All right, let's go to the lines. We'll begin with Phil in Du Bois. What's up, Phil? How are you? Uh, good. Uh, first time caller. Uh, I'm a little Appreciate nervous. It. Never was on TV. Before. Don't worry about it. Hey, Gene is as friendly as they come, so he'll make you feel right at home. What's up? <laughs> okay. Hey, just wanted to, to talk real quick about New England. Uh, most people agree Tom Brady's uh, greatest of all time and New England Patriots, one of the greatest dynasties up there with maybe the New York Yankees and the mm -hmm. Canadians. But uh, many people think they're in a weak division and did a little uh, study here and found that the pa if you include the Patriots during Brady's time, uh, they're actually first among all divisions in the NFL. Well, you say, well, the Patriots, they've won – you know, so much you, yeah. that doesn't, you discount them. But if you admit the Patriots, you have to admit all the divisional champs. If you do that, they're second uh, to the uh, NFC. Well, what's, your, what's, your bottom, what's your bottom point? No, the point is, is the Patriots um, are not in a weak division, as many people think. I disagree. Uh, I think they are, and I, th I give them credit because they beat the teams they're supposed to beat. Thank you for the call. I hope it was a good first-time experience for you. Gene, they take advantage of the Bills, the Dolphins, and the Jets, and they've had for many, many years. you still got to win those games. The Steelers have had opportunities like it, and they've missed on those. They've lost to teams. And this year, no bigger example than Cleveland, than Denver, than Oakland, all of those games. Um, they take advantage, and they win. I, agree. I think it's a weak division. Do you? Yeah, I think it's a, you know, historically weak division, but uh, I applaud him doing the study and... Uh and calling us and uh, getting to know us here on the air. <laughs> Dave, Castle Shannon, what's up, Dave? Hey, hi, hi, Bob. Hi, Gene. Hey. Hey, I want to ask you, who was the oldest quarterback to, to retire? Was it Brett Farr? How about Blanda? George Blanda, I believe. Blanda was 46, right? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe Brady will go to a 50. 
Maybe not. Line two, it's Alan. Maybe Bethel we were Park. right. Maybe we weren't. <laughs> Hello, Al. Hey, hey, Bob. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, uh, Gene, a couple of nights ago, Bob put up the Pirates payroll at $71 million. I want to even comment on that. Yeah. Gene, you're a newspaper guy, and all these uh, stories are broken by newspaper guys, whether in politics or whether in local and stuff. The newspaper guys need to break on with Bob Nutting. And if the, all the newspaper and fans break, they can force uh, the commissioner to make them – institute the uh, best interest in baseball clause against Bob Nutting. Because if the luxury tax is not designed to help 80% of the Pirates payroll to be paid by the luxury tax, because 71 million, 50 million of that is luxury tax, then he's not doing what the luxury tax is, is designed for. And you can't right. have 50 million to be paid for by the New York Yankees, Chicago Cubs, and Boston Red Sox. So Let's I'm calling you. on the media to do All right. pressure we'll get Gene's on Gene's response. Thank you for the call, right. Gene. Uh, well, thanks for that. Um, I, I don't. I don't know how. Which point uh, I need to repeat more on the show? I mean, all of this has been uh, said. Uh, the media is no no better than the fans in in the regard that n neither of us can make Bob Nutting sell the team. Uh, I don't doubt your figures. Uh, you know their payroll is not going to stay at 71 percent, but or 71 million. But you're right. I mean, it, to, to have somebody at a payroll of 71 million in this era, when there are payrolls of uh, 200 million and in excess of 200 million, uh, shows that Nutting is not running the operation in the best in the best interest of of the town or the game. It's, he's not running it as a public trust. He's just running it as a profit venture. Mike, Squirrel Hill, you're up next right here on the Sports Call. What's up, Mike? Yeah, two, one real quick thing. I don't know how many people realize it, but Mariana Rivera was the last person to do something, and that's the where the number 42. Yeah, and then it, it, yeah. It's, it's been, uh, you know, that was Jackie Robinson's number, and he was the last guy right. to wear it in the major leagues. The second thing, and this will get Gene's uh, dander up, uh, after the penalty <laughs> against the Los Angeles Chargers where – there was a uh, false start, and it mm -hmm. wasn't called. Right. I had just gotten out of the hospital after having pneumonia, pneumonia and being there six weeks. Oh, oh glad I you're was doing so better. Upset. I haven't, I haven't watched or a national game on television since then. I just got so mad that I just gave up on the NFL. Mm. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm glad you're doing better, though. Yeah, uh -huh. you sound good. You sound strong. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what my advice would be uh, to you other than uh, not to take it so seriously. Meredith Leonard, one of our favorites on Twitter. Yeah, she Meredith, said, what's up? Yes, yeah, she said George Blander retired at 48. Oh, thanks, I thought Meredith. it was 46, but hey. So how long do you think Gene Bre uh, Brady will go? Real quick answer before we go to break. How long do you think he'll play? Two more years. How about if they win this year? Think that, any chance of him stopping? No. No. Hmm. we got to take a break. More calls on the way it's right here. As quick as I can do it, Bob. <laughs> Pittsburgh's season. <laughs> 